All right, uh, from London, we head to the crypto space now to see if uh, the numbers are looking any better this morning, even though I do that, doubt that. It doesn't look like the numbers are looking any better. There you see, it's still extreme fear in the market, uh, the fear greed index. That means that investors are still afraid and not comfortable with uh, the market. Uh, if we look at the market cap, it's a bit better than yesterday, just about 2% higher, still 900. I remember when this market used to be about 2 trillion? Dollars? Wow. Seems like another life. Now it's just uh, less than a trillion, $994.88 billion. Uh, between 24 hours, it had 1.89%. 24 hour volume is 67.12. It's up 32.08. Uh, BTC dominance uh, dropped a bit more, still within the 38%, though, but uh, dropped compared to yesterday. We see the top olds back up. Oh, okay, there you have it. Price of Bitcoin, um, 19,000 still stretching to hit the 20,000 uh, used to take 20,000 for you know granted but now it's difficult to hit it 24 hour volume of Bitcoin is 31.72 billion dollars and then if we would see the price of ethereum and uh, we do know something is going on around ethereum it's up 6.65 percent at 1,666.76. 24 hour volume, 16.76. We have a Lumidea addition on now uh, joining us to give us a little bit of a story. We'll come to this after Lumidea. Hi, Lumidea. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. Well, some analysts are saying that um, Bitcoin will become obsolete after Ethereum merge. What do you think? Well, I think that's very difficult, and I won't bet against that because for many reasons, um, Bitcoin has been the pioneer crypto asset. You need to understand that it still remains um, the most dominant crypto asset to date, despite the fact that we have about 18,000 crypto projects. Also, um, institutional investors are more excited about its anti-inflationary um, properties, meaning that it has a fixed supply. And that's one of the things that you can't take away from Bitcoin. Uh, it also doesn't have a central authority. Uh, th there's no crypto asset that has that um, advantage. But, you know, uh, one of the utilities advantage um, uh, other altcoins, particularly Ethereum has, is because it can be used uh, for many uh, use cases, particularly smart contracts um, uh, functionality. And recent reports that suggest a merge where uh, it will move from its proof of work uh, model to proof of stake. It's really what is exciting people because, first of all, it means that it consumes less electricity. Uh, secondly, it means that uh, execution will be much more simpler. So questions are still on the air that um, with the safety Bitcoin brings in terms of the fact that it has not been hacked to date, uh, would that be uh, in plain Ethereum? Uh, but right now, uh, the market is really betting on the merge, and that's why you're seeing Ethereum um, hitting that um, 1,600 uh, resistance level. Mm. So talking about the price of Bitcoin now, uh, I mean, most of last week, I think, we had it at 20,000. Now it's gone to 19. Do you see it going up or down? Well, I'm not a market prophet, but uh, one of the exciting things that we've seen about the market is that, you know, uh, it's very difficult to bet against the era of tightening liquidity and the fact that central banks are fighting aggressively towards inflation. And that's why we've seen Bitcoin ranging between uh, the $19,800 uh, level to the $25 for many weeks. Uh, but having said that, you know, uh, recent reports suggest that um, it's very unlikely for uh, risky assets to enjoy uh, that run we saw in 2021. And that's why equity markets included are suffering. But with the fact that Bitcoin is still trading around the 2017 high tells you that um, we're not going to see that bad. So some investors are betting that it has bottomed out. Uh, but I'm seeing the fact that uh, it will take a much more uh, pro uh, US Fed uh, statement on risk um, of sentiments before we see that institutional investments coming to play again. But right now, it doesn't look like we're going to see that 2021 run with the U.S. Fed aggressive um, approach. All right, Alumide, thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Thank you.